Today we will talk about one of the basic Zabbix concepts that is extremely important to make your environment flexible called low level discovery. So let's look at data collection hosts and we can see we have a variety of different hosts. For example, if we look at our Linux servers, we can see that we have various different Linux servers and each of these servers probably has a different set of resources, a different set of CPUs, different set of file systems, different set of services and so on. So if I look at my Linux server items and I filter by discovered yes, I can see that some of the items on this host are discovered by discovery rules. Discovery rules can dynamically discover your resources. For example, right now I'm looking at interfaces and by using filters, create entities, items, triggers, graphs, even hosts for each of the discovered resources. Let's look at some more examples. If I go to data collection hosts, and now I'll look at my Cisco switch over here. Once again, I'll go to items and in the filters, I will filter by discovered yes. I can see that there are many entities over here, serial numbers, interfaces, also discovered and managed by low level discovery rules. Another example would be an HP printer. Let's look at the items on this HP printer and we can see that we are also automatically discovering cartridges and creating items for cartridge levels. So as we add or remove new cartridges, low level discovery rule would automatically create items, triggers and graphs for them. Now let's look at a discovery rule on our Linux server. We'll use a simple example over here. Let's go to discovery. We have three discovery rules for block devices mounted file systems and network interfaces. And let's look at network interface discovery as our example for this video. So the network interface discovery rule looks very much like a regular item. A discovery rule can have a type. It has a key. So this is a Zabbix agent discovery rule. And an agent has a predefined set of keys that it knows how to use for resource discovery. Net if discovery is one of such keys. It has an interface, it has an update interval. So how often do we run the discovery rule and scan for changes with our resources? So maybe a new interface has been added. Maybe an interface has been removed and react to those changes. If we add an interface, we will create new items for it. If we remove an interface, well, we can decide over here what we can do with interfaces in this case that have been removed or any other resources that have been removed. But right now we're talking about interface discovery. So if we lose a resource, let's say we remove an interface. In our situation, we have configured that we will delete it after seven days. But as soon as the discovery rule detects that the interface is lost, we will immediately disable it. So disable lost resources. If we set delete lost resources to immediately, this is actually not a good practice for production environments because let's say we are reconfiguring our host and we have temporarily removed an interface. We don't want to immediately delete all of the related items and lose history for them. That's why we have defined delete lost resources after seven days. So that's our low level discovery rule. We also need to pay attention to prototypes. These are actually blueprints. Right? If I go to item prototypes, I have nine item pro prototypes, four trigger prototypes, and one graph prototype. So for each of the discovered interfaces, I will be creating nine items, four triggers, and one graph. And if I look at item prototypes, I can see that instead of interface names, I have these low-level discovery macros. They are prefixed with a pound symbol, in curly brackets, all caps. And these low level discovery macros, they will be replaced with the name, in this case, if name of the interface that we have discovered. Under the hood, let's look at documentation. Each discovery rule, each low level discovery rule, will return a pair of low level discovery macros and their values. In this case, we are looking at file system discovery, right? And we are discovering different file systems. This is JSON data. And what the low level discovery rule returns is low level discovery macros and their values. So file system names and file system types. And we can actually filter 
that we wish to discover only particular file systems based on their name, on their type. If we look at our network interface discovery, let's go back, we also have filters here. We will be discovering interfaces if their name matches the value of this user macro or does not match LO. So we do not wish to discover the local host interface. This filter does not match. I added it yesterday. And now let's look at the items on my Linux server host. Once again, let's filter only by the discovered items. And if I scroll down, I can see that I have discovered ETH0 interface, right? And notice that once again, the low level discovery macro has been populated with the interface name ETH0, both in the name and in the key over here. And it's an agent type of item based on the item prototype. And for each of the discovered interfaces, we'll create nine items, right? So we have items for ETH0 and items for localhost over here. And since yesterday, after discovering the localhost interface, I decided that I do not wish to monitor it, its localhost interface. I now have an orange information symbol next to it. The item is not discovered anymore and has been disabled. It'll be deleted in six days, one hour and seven minutes. This is based on the keep lost resources period. So the local host interface items have been disabled immediately, but they will be removed in seven days. Since I added this filter yesterday, it's now six days, one hour, seven minutes. Um, I could just delete these discovered items to clean things up if I don't want to wait for seven days and they will not be rediscovered. Let me delete these items. And I will now rerun the discovery rule, right? I can execute it now, just like a regular item. Let me execute it. And you will see that no local host items or triggers are created because the local host interface is filtered out and it is not discovered anymore, right? We're not seeing entities for it anymore over here. And we can even discover hosts. If we go to data collection hosts, you will see on this environment, if I search for container, I have various containers. This is a bit more advanced. Host discovery is quite advanced and you should sort of get comfortable with low level discovery in general. But once you do, you can actually provide information in low level discovery macros about hosts, about containers. And in this case, I am discovering containers. Right, let's look at Apache web container. And some of this data is populated from low-level discovery macros. And we can see that Podman container template is linked by host discovery. And on this discovered host, we are using Podman container template to monitor it. So like I said, this is a bit more advanced. I won't delve back into it. But if we go back to hosts and look for Linux hosts once again, so network interfaces discovery, this is something that you should start with. Fine tune your discovery rules. How often do you want for them to run? Start with agent discovery rules. Look for our documentation and search for discovery keys. The agent supports a couple of them and you can use them to discover various entities. Tune your prototypes, right? So items are created from item prototypes and you can change them around. You can change their um, for example, update intervals, you can change their names, edit those, you can change their tags. So we can see we use low-level discovery macros to tag each discovered interface with its name and much more. Create your own custom prototypes, try playing around with it. And that's pretty much it for the introduction to low-level discovery. There's a lot more that we could talk about here. This topic can take hours. There are filters, there are overrides, there are ways to customize your prototypes via, for example, pre-processing, uh, ways how we can use custom low-level discovery data. So over here, we could use any type of item, so any type of discovery rule. If it gives us this kind of data, so a pair in JSON of low-level discovery macro and its value, we could even be sending custom low-level discovery data via scripts 
um, we could collect data from API endpoints via HTTP checks, use pre-processing to transform it, for example, and then discover entities from those HTTP endpoints. But that's all a bit more advanced than we want to talk about now. So start with agent discovery rules and play around with those and see if you can understand, if you can filter all of the necessary resources and get what you are looking for. So thank you for watching. We will talk more about some other basic Zabbix concepts in the upcoming videos. And if you have something you wish to see or discuss with us, leave a note in the comments and we will try and take that into account when we film our next set of videos. Thank you guys. Have a great day.